In this video, we're going to focus on banked curves. So here's a question for you. A car is traveling on a frictionless banked curve of radius 200 meters. If the curve is banked at an angle of 15 degrees, at what speed should the car travel in order for it not to slide up or down? So let's draw a picture. So banked curve look like an incline, but it's different. There's circular motion involved. So I'm going to draw a box. Now imagine this box as being a car. Let's call this the x direction. And let's call this the y direction. And the car is moving forward in the z direction. Now you want to make a distinction between this type of motion and a regular incline, which we covered earlier, where a box simply slides down in the x direction. It's not moving in the y direction. And so you want to make that, that distinction. Now, if the car is moving too fast without friction being present, it's going to slide off. It's going to slide up the banked curve in that direction. If it's moving too slow, it's going to slide down towards the center. So there is a certain speed at which the car will not slide up or down. Our goal is to find that speed. Now I want to make a distinction between the free body diagrams of a regular incline and a banked curve. So in a typical incline, we would have a normal force perpendicular to the surface as usual. And there's a component of the weight force that will accelerate the block downward. So this is the weight. And here is a component of the weight force. This side is mg cosine theta. And this is mg sine theta. Now on a regular incline, the normal force is equal to mg times cosine theta. So let's say if we had an angle of 45 degrees. Cosine 45 is 0 0.7071. So that means that the normal force supports 70.71% of the weight of the object in the regular incline problem. Now, on a banked curve, the situation is different. The normal force is still directed in the same direction. It's still perpendicular to the surface. However, it supports more than the weight of the object. The normal force has a component that is directed towards the center of the circle. So keep in mind, this object is traveling in circular motion. It also has a y component. So I'm going to call this f and x. And let's call this f and y. Now we still have to deal with the weight of the object, which is mg. Now it turns out that this angle here is equivalent to this angle. Now if you want to see it, let's say that this angle, I'm running out of space, but let's say it's 60. That means this angle is 30. And this line is perpendicular to that line, which means this angle must be 60 as well. And the normal force is perpendicular to the surface, so that's another 90 degree angle, which means this is 30 and this has to be 60. So these two are equivalent to each other. Hopefully you can see that because I am short in space. There's not much space to work there. Now what you need to realize is that this force, the y component of the normal force, is equal to the weight of the object when friction is not present. So Fny is equal to mg. 
Now, fn y is fn cosine. If you recall from uh, Sokotoa, hopefully you took trig, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's fn y over fn. So fn y, if you rearrange it by cross multiplying, is fn cosine theta. And so these two are equal to each other. So fn cosine theta is equal to mg, which means that the normal force is mg divided by cosine. So make sure you see the difference between these two equations. In a regular incline problem, the normal force is mg times cosine theta. But for a bank curve, it's mg divided by cosine. And if the angle is 45, like in this example, 1 divided by cosine 45, or 1 divided by 0 0.7071, is 1.414. So the normal force supports 141.4% of the weight force at this angle. So clearly, the normal force on a banked curve is doing a lot more work than the normal force on the incline. It's putting a lot more effort. Now you might be wondering, why is it so different? What's the reason? Well, if you look at an incline, the normal force only has to support just a portion of the weight, the mg cosine part of the weight. The reason being is a portion of the weight force is used to cause the object to slide down the incline. Now in this example, the normal force has to support the full weight of the object and not only that, but it has to provide the centripetal force necessary to keep the object traveling in circular motion. And so that's why the normal force is a lot larger on a bank curve than on a regular incline. But now let's get back to the problem. So let me erase a lot of stuff. So I'm going to redraw the incline. Here's our vehicle. Here's the normal force. And this is the x component of the normal force. And this is the y component. So keep in mind, whatever angle we have here is equivalent to this angle. So the y component of the normal force, as we said, it's fn times cosine theta which means that the x component has to be fn sine theta. Sine is associated with the opposite side. Cosine is associated with the adjacent side with respect to the angle that you're considering. And let's not forget about the weight force. Now keep in mind, if there's no friction, there is an exact speed for the car not to slide up the incline or the bank curve or down the bank curve. And this is important to understand. If the car is moving too fast, if it's moving greater at that design speed, the car is going to slide up the incline if it's moving too fast. If it's moving too slow, it's going to slide down the bank curve. So just make sure you understand that because that's important. So we need to find a speed at which it's going to maintain its current position. How can we find that speed? So let's focus on the forces in the y direction. So we have the net force in the y direction that's equal to this upward force. And because it's going in a positive y direction, it's going to be positive Fn cosine. And this force is going in a negative y direction, so negative mg. Now, there is no net acceleration in the y direction. The car is not being lifted off the ground, and it's not going straight through the ground. It's maintaining its position in the y direction. So therefore, the net force in the y direction, we could say, is zero. So now I'm going to add mg to both sides. And so mg is equal to fn cosine theta. And if you divide both sides by cosine, you'll see that the normal force 
on a bank curve when no friction is present, it's equal to mg divided by cosine. On a regular incline, it's mg times cosine. Now, what about the forces in the y direction? I mean, not the y direction, but the x direction. Let's see what we can come up with. The only force in the x direction is Fn sine theta, the x component of the normal force. Now, there is a net force in the x direction because there is an acceleration towards the center of the bank curve. And that acceleration, based on this diagram, it's pointing in a negative x direction. So this is x, and this is the y direction. Now, I should add a negative sign to Fn sine theta, because this is going in a negative x direction. Now, the net force is the mass times the acceleration. And that's the centripetal acceleration, because it causes the, the car to move within circular motion. And it's going in the negative x direction, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. Just so you can get used to the process of setting up these types of formulas. Now, in this example, the two negative signs will cancel. And the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So this net force is really the centripetal force. And that's equal to fn sine theta. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the normal force with mg over cosine theta because they're equal to each other. So let's take this and insert it into this equation. And so what we're going to have now is mv squared over r is equal to mg divided by cosine times sine. Now we could divide both sides by m, so we can cancel it. And sine divided by cosine is tangent, if you remember your trick stuff. So v squared over r is equal to g times tangent theta. Now our goal in this problem is to calculate the speed. So we need to get v by itself. So let's multiply both sides by r. And so we can get rid of this. And so v squared is equal to rg tangent theta. And now what we need to do at this point is take the square root of both sides. So here's the equation v is equal to, let's just uh, get rid of some stuff now. Let's just write this bigger. So v is equal to the square root of rg tangent theta. So this equation allows us to calculate the speed at which the car can maintain its position in a bank curve without sliding up or down, and when no friction is present. So the radius of curvature, it's 200 meters. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the road is banked at an angle of 15 degrees. So that's going to be tangent 15. So make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So the answer that you should have is 22.9 meters per second. So if the car maintains that speed, it's not going to slide up or down. It's simply going to travel forward. Let me draw that better. Let's say if the car speeds up and travels at 30 meters per second, it's going to go up the incline. If it goes at 15 meters per second, it's going to go down the incline. So if you view it just from a flat surface like this, if it travels at 30, it's going to go up this way. If it travels at 15, it's going to go down that way. But if it maintains a speed of 22.9, it's going to stay where it is.
Now let's move on to part B. What angle should the road be banked for a car to travel at a speed of 30 meters per second without sliding up or down in the absence of friction? So if we can increase the angle, we can increase the speed at which a vehicle can safely travel the bank curve without sliding up or down. So that new angle has to be greater than 15 degrees because at a, an angle 15 degrees, the speed was 22.9 meters per second. So if we want to increase the speed to 30, we need a much larger angle. So let's go ahead and calculate the angle. Let's square both sides. So V squared is equal to RG tangent theta. And now let's divide both sides by RG. So V squared divided by RG is tangent. Now to get theta, the angle, we need to take the arc tangent of both sides. So the angle is going to be arc tangent or inverse tangent of V squared divided by RG. So this is the equation that you want to use if you need to find the banking angle when no friction is present. So it's going to be arc tangent v squared or 30 squared divided by the radius which is 200 times 9.8. 30 squared or 30 times 30 is 900 and 200 times 9.8 that's 1960. So this is going to be arc tangent 900 over 1960 and so that's going to give you an angle of 24.66 degrees or we could say 24.7 let's round it so at this angle the car can safely travel at a speed of 30 meters per second without sliding up or down the banked curve